And then once you go and have a seat up here, and we'll go ahead and look at the rest of the hip. Okay. Back. Yeah, if you would go ahead and lie back, please. And, okay. Um, and, and please let me know if anything is sore sure. or uncomfortable as we do this. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull your gown up a little bit if that's okay. Yeah. I'm just going to palpate um, about the pelvis for instability just to be sure there's no pain. So I'm just going to place both hands over the iliac crest and just rock a little bit if there's any pain or anything there. Bill, let me know. Nope. Yeah. It's going to palpate over the greater trochanter, which is located on the lateral aspect of the thigh, and it's the large bony prominence. See if there's any tenderness there. And is that uh, no, sore at all, Bill? Okay, no. good. Now we're going to go ahead and look at the range of motion of the hip. We're first going to look at flexion. I'm just going to, I'm going to flex your hip up and then bend your knee, and try to, we're going to try to flex this as far up in the abdomen as you can, and you should. You normally get about 130 degrees of flexion here at the hip. And have you straighten your leg out. And then pick your leg up with the knee extended. And then you should normally get about close to 90 degrees of flexion here. And Bill's got good loose hamstrings, so he's uh, pretty limber. Um, now we're going to go ahead and check for internal and external rotation. So I'm going to bend your hip and bend your knee to about 90 degrees. I'm going to internally rotate the leg. And sort of paradoxically, when you internally rotate the leg, the foot goes to the outside. When I externally rotate the hip, now the foot's going to go to the inside. Okay, any soreness or pain yeah. there? Sorry. Okay, good. And I'm going to uh, abduct or abduct the leg at the hip. So I'm going to pull the, the, uh, the hip away from the midline. Okay. I'm going to adduct the hip and pull it towards the, across his body until the pelvis starts to come up off the other off the table, and he's just starting to rotate now, so we'll stop there. Okay. I'm not going to go ahead and take a look at extension of the hip while he's standing. This is a fairly easy way to do that. So, Bill, if you could just move to the table, and uh, oh, um, I'll hold it up for you. Okay. If you could just sort of support yourself here sure. so we don't lose your balance, and try to stand up straight. I'm just going to reach down and um, support your leg, and I'm just going to extend this back. And you would ex expect this to extend back about 20 or 30 degrees. Um, thanks, Bill. You can also do that in the, in the prone position. And we're going to go ahead and uh, first just inspect the knee, looking at the patella, at the bony landmarks, at the, both at the, uh, the normal concavities on either side of the patella and below. I'm going to come back and look at the knee now to say if uh, Mr. Grant was presenting with a painful knee. And we sort of look, take a look at the knee a little more closely. First, we'll just again look at the knee um, and then palpate it. And we'll both we'll, uh, palpate the patella for any tenderness or discomfort. I'm going to palpate the lateral joint line at the tibiofemoral joint. Again, looking for any pain or um, bony abnormality. Then also in the medial aspect of that joint. I'm going to palpate the tibial tuberosity. And then the, uh, post, then the uh, popliteal space behind the knee. And there aren't any abnormalities there. Then we go ahead and check the range of motion of the knee, first by just extending the knee. And most people can get their knees to close to 160 degrees here. And then extend the knee. And most people can at least get their knees to a neutral position, zero. And many people have a little bit of hyperextension. Up to 15 degrees is normal. And we'll just has a little bit of hyperextension at his knee here. OK. Now, some people in the injury might have an effusion in the knee, and I'm going to do a couple of tests now to assess if, to see if there were, was any fluid in, in Bill's knee. I'm going to put one hand over the suprapatellar pouch, and because the, the knee um, joint space actually extends up above the patella um, into, this, into, the distal, into the distal leg, and that's called the suprapatellar pouch. And this test is called belotment. I'm just going to tap on his kneecap or his patella to see if I can drive it back into his femoral condyles. And really, there's really not much give there. And when I let go, if there were an effusion, there'd feel, you'd feel a little bit of a bounce coming back, and there's not. So he doesn't really have any effusion. The other test for effusion is, is called the um, bulge sign. And the way you do that is you uh, stroke the medial aspect of the knee between the patella and the femoral condyle, and you try to push the fluid up into the super, super patellar pouch. So I'm just going to firmly push 
a few times to try to milk any fluid that might be present from the medial aspect of the knee up into the suprapatellar pouch. And I'm just going to take my other hand and push on the lateral aspect of the knee between the patella and the femoral condyle and, or the epicondyle and just see if there's a bulge on the other side on the medial aspect of the knee and there's not. So he uh, doesn't have any fluid in his knee.